Well, it's me again. My name is Abbas Tamori. Everybody in Canada calls me Tony. They thought I'm from Palermo, Italy. Since my last talk to you, I've been struggling with myself that am I in the position to talk about what's happening in the US. After all, this is politics. And as a Baha'i, uh, we are not, strictly speaking, uh, told to uh, enter into the politics of any kind. So I try to refrain to taking sides here. I'll just take the side of the truth. My involvement in politics here is just, I'm going to talk on a matter of education, but obviously I'm a Canadian after all. So I've been thinking, I'm an Iranian origin uh, that most of you hate, and that is the Trumps and his followers and Anglo-Saxons. Uh, that is not, however, the view of the Iranian and other people of the world, except the white people in the world. They all like American, especially you guys, you know, those blonde Anglo-Saxons, you know, from South. Myself, I uh, grew up with the American culture. I've said this before. Those things are uh, a part of my existence. So, ideologically, I am an American. Well, I'm not born there. So, the reason I'm going to do this talk is that I just really feel extremely sorry for you guys. You know, for what's happening to you. And if I could shed a light on it, usually friends and uh, friends that come not from the closest people, from the most unlikely places. So, but really to talk about these topics of what happened to the Congress, to the building, by the so-called Anglo-Saxon whites, mostly. For a person to do an analysis of what's happening, uh, uh, I think the person has to prove that he's qualified to talk about this. So, I'm going to, I'm going to read your mind. I have been with you guys, you know, as a salesman mostly English in North, but I've been lots of times in Arizona, and especially Texas, nicest people. So I'm going to see if I'm qualified. If you find me qualified, then maybe you should listen to me a bit. As an elder of God, it's both my duty and talent to know people, okay? Because I have to talk about their concern, wherever in the world. Let's find out what kind of a people are you. So you know who you are, but let's say I'm saying to others. And what are you suffering from? Ah, uh, why nobody recognizing you? Because that's what's happening right now. You know, you're storming to the Congress, because of a lot of problem you have. So, as far as not getting recognized, maybe you feel that way by your government and others, that's not how the people of the world, they look at that like that. I personally believe you people, that's strictly speaking Anglo-Saxons, they're the one who, out of adventure, out of finding new things, sacrifice, whatever you want to call it, they came all the way from England here. 
And when you think about the first colonies, the 13 colonies, it was all you guys. And you had the spice that you brought yourself from Africa, which are those blacks. There wasn't many other people. Some, you know, Latinos, Spanish people, maybe at that time. Some at those days. But there were blacks, there's no doubt. A very small amount of them, but they were there. And the white people, you have built United States, you have built Canada. This is a race that has basically designed the new planet. You're from the race that has brought so many scientists in all the fields, that has increased the population of mankind. Your money, your tax money, has gone all around the world. You know, take it from the Second World War, from saving Japan, saving Korea, even in South Africa, India. You Americans, those Anglo-Saxon from England, from Scotland, Ireland, you know, Wales, essentially, primarily, you're responsible for a lot of good things on the planet. So all the time say that to yourself and be proud of it you know they're the ancestors of george washington jefferson the declaration of the independence not just of america really of the mankind was written by your ancestors you're the offspring of the most glorious race so that's my answer for those who are wanting to put you down but you have to believe that in yourself. Maybe study a bit so you know who you are. I think um, one of your problem again is that why nobody listens to you, you know, and wants to analyze your problem, respond to this, this family problems that in the past, I don't know, from 50s onward after the Second World War, basically have destroyed Anglo-Saxons' family values. Fathers and mothers don't have that meaning that they used to have. And then the laws, the family laws, for example, suppresses the male. I won't get suppressed and depressed, but your kind, Anglo-Saxon kind, they're sensitive people, they do. So what they can't do with the law, when this is lopsided, as a male, you have no, your feeling is not recognized. Your children are given to your spouse that's left you, or when betrayed you, or just being male, you've been put down. And for whatever reason is there, the moment you're white and blonde with the blue eyes, you're the symbol of the terror of racism. It's just, this is how it turns out, you know. <coughs> you, have a, you have a problem with that. Uh, and um, this is my assessment of that. Every time you want to complain, Let's say if there's an argument between you and a visible minority, like me, or the black, you know, with the Spanish. Always the white is suspected to be racist, <clears throat> transgressor, or something. People, they really don't look at this anymore as an equal. People are going with the wind, you know, one day was always black wrong, and now it's all the time white people are wrong. Not the people in the north, not those who are, uh, uh, they know what to do. They talk politics, but you guys talk from the word of heart, and that's where you lose. And they don't look at this thing, they don't want to. You're always, uh, you know, labeled with racism, cruel, 
I think uh, personally, uh, even that guy who sat on the seat of the, uh, uh, as I said, most dignified woman in my opinion, uh, Pelosi, he has a he has a heart of gold. That guy, he just can't find friend, you know, true friend to show it. Maybe that's what he wants to express. Mm -hmm. So. The problem is that why your government does not look at your poverty. You're poor. I've seen the wages that you get in the United States as opposed in Canada. It's dismal. You have a problem. Why the government of any kind spends your money, your taxpayers' money, to go police the world, bring social justice around the world, Literally billions and trillions of dollars is going, and yet nobody pays attention to you. Still, your wages are down, your jobs are gone, and you're bewildered and confused. This is a problem. So, and on the top of that, really, the bureaucracy that we have right now, all this red tape and everything else, it has basically uh, uh, have put those white people that, as I said, I've seen in Arizona and Texas, a whole lot of them. Just poor guys, you know, uh, because they're stronger, because they're proud, and that's their fault. Because they talk, you know, loud, that's it. They said this is the typical racist. But you help that happen too yourself. It's not just them. So I don't know. If you think, if you think I've kind of read a bit of what your problems are. And if it is true what I say about what you feel, let's see what do we have to do this? How do we fix this? Well, your ways have been, you know, going right now to uh, Congress, you know, storming. And what else you want to do? You're going totally to obliterate the white man reputation completely everything that's out there. You're giving all your aces to your so-called enemy or opposers. So, after saying those things, I have thought about to see what are your problems? What are you wrong? What's your weakness? Number one, I've written it for myself. You're angry and you show violence, and you raise your voice. This is it. This is number one issue. You gotta control yourself. Do not raise your voice. Show humility. You don't, you raise your voice, and you know what it is right now. This is your race right now, it's like the invasions of the body snatchers. You can't show feeling and sensitivity. If you're angry, then you're violent. Then you need Prozac. Anger is a natural feeling. It's a natural emotion. We have to be angry when you see when we see tyranny, when we see transgression, when we see, you know cruelty I should be I am an angry man but you will not see my anger you won't but you do that's your problem you have to control yourself there is no point if you can't and the rage is inside you back then say somebody else to do it it's like driving a car. If you're drunk and you know it, just say that you're not 
go on, go in the front. You know. And all these uh, stigmas and all these insignias and all these things that you put on your face and uh, you're just completely trying to show you're a vulgar, arrogant, violent man. Which to me is just a fashion statement. To me it's fine to have a blue color hair and yet you, to be a great, inspiring leader of the society. So be it. That guy looks like a Viking, that guy. It's fine to me. But that is not what society sees, you know. Not from a leader, anyways. That's the number one problem you have. The second thing is you do not know who are your enemies. Your number one enemy is your own kind. The very white Anglo-Saxon brothers. It's my nice, I have no end to video. Black has got nothing to do with you. Asians, Arabs, Latinos, they have nothing to do with you. They like it, who you are. You know? I went to that city south in Arizona where the OK Corral, the war happened. Uh, the fight happened, the, the fight of the OK Corral. I can't remember the name of that town. It was a fantastic little town, eh? I was again feeling like a young man in there. So, uh, the blacks in America, Latinos have exactly the same problem you have. But the son of a guns, those who want to exploit you and exploit blacks, the leaders of both sides of the aisles, they use these minorities to show that the battle is between them because they want to make money out of it. You know, there is that Brett Bear, if I say his name right, at Fox News, he's a gentleman. But when Tucker Carlson, or that Angram Engel, or this other guy, Vanity Hannity, they're not talking for you. They just want to sell advertisement. You exist to inflame you, so you say things, they come supposedly to defend you. Why? Because this rhetoric, this talks, this show is what's selling. Because you watch it. Therefore, they sell you bullshit. Because that's what you want. There's single, not a single truth in what they say. Same thing as at NBC, I don't know, whatever channels are. These guys are not there to solve the problem. You know. So, if you are a smart, you have to team up with the blacks and the other minority. You know why? Because you yourself are a minority. This is another thing you don't know, that your number is not there. And the white people will not come towards you. They won't. A million times ago, they don't. But the blacks, the minorities, they would have to come to you. Huh. But you don't think that is a problem. You think the problems are blacks and the skins. This is where you're wrong, you know? I want just to tell you a secret. If you were to be completely supporting Joe Biden, who's just another white Anglo-Saxon, more white inside than Donald Trump, in my opinion, yet he's a good man, I have no doubt about that, and a smart. If you were to be supporting him fully and completely, then he wouldn't need the black vote. <laughs> then he wouldn't need the minority vote. 
because now he's being taken ransom. He has to listen to these minorities, although they're not telling the truth, although uh, they have no solution. Their complaint is true, but their solution is not a solution. To call the group of people that are marginalized because they are blonde, because of the bad family values they had, because of bad upbringing, because of a divorce in their families. They've been ostracized. And you want to call these guys arrogant, violent, this and that. Well, what truth is in that? There's no truth in that. You know it, but you know what to do, though. You think you have to attack the black color? No, that's the problem. If you would have got up, whatever, five days from now, imagine, in the inaugurations, all of you with a banner raised in the name of uh, Joe Biden. Say that, sir, now we know. You're just as white. It is impossible. You are a fool if you think he does not understand your pain. He does. But the other side, who's after nothing but exploiting you, using your energy and redirecting you to the wrong battle, which there is no battle. What can Barack Obama say? He says that black life matters. Not more, not less. But the way it shows, right now, everything is backwards. Why? Because Biden is afraid. Because he's lost, you guys. You fool have to support him. Completely. Support all these uh, other then he would not to rely on the minorities of any kind. You know, I'm not attacking anybody. Then he doesn't. Then he would not be afraid. Then he sees that you guys are with him. Then he would do the right things. But right now, he's in minority himself. He has to put up, you know, wrong enemies, you know. So, the third thing about you guys is that you do not have a leader, unfortunately. There's a lot of energy. There's no leader. A right leader like me has to recognize what the problem is. What enemy? That's the stupidest thing. What terrorist? How can an American to be a terrorist against America? How? It just doesn't, it's just the most cynical way, word to say that. The guy sitting on the chair of police, is he a terrorist really? But by definition of the law is, because you continue to give them all the reason that yes, you are. Because the law says you came there. So you don't have leader, my friend. You're going to the wrong leaders. Let me tell you a little story of an Iranian story, a Persian story. Once upon a time in a village where there was no teachers, two people entered the little village and said that we are teachers, we are here to teach you. They said, okay, put a blackboard on the wall and said, okay, the guy says that. Well, you know, I have education, I have this and that, and uh, all I got was a shyster. He says, okay. He says he's the real teacher. Ask him to write a snake. In Persian, they say mar. So he went and wrote M-A-R, mar, or in English, a snake. That's a, that's a snake. The shyster got up and said, does, th does that look like a snake to you guys? I said, no. He went and then uh, draw a uh, drawing of a snake people said oh yeah that's a snake that's a snake they bought into that because they didn't know it's exactly where you guys are you're buying into superficial 
most superficial. I don't know. You, <laughs> how could you be so, such a simpleton? It bugs the hell out of me that you don't see it. So, this is the third problem you have. So, so far, you don't know your enemies, you lose your control, and three, you don't have a leader. The fourth problem is that you don't have no ideology. This is not an ideology to say that this is wrong, that is wrong, that is wrong, this is wrong. <clears throat> that's, that's just criticism. Okay, all of this is bad. What is right according to you? You don't see it. You think if the guy is a blonde and he's suffering from bipolarism, Donald Trump, which, another, which is another victim anyways, except that this guy is so big that he is his own enemy. He doesn't have another enemy. You know, He's his own enemy too. You know, you've chosen him to be your leader. If he would have said in the beginning, last November, that Corona is here and I am ordering the army and everything else, they have to have a mask with the complete mask, you know, like a military, you know, things. What would be the cost of 300 million of those? Probably 300 million dollar, maybe one billion. And I would say right in January, everyone in America has to do that. That's my order. And nobody comes to America unless we pass the test that he has no corona. We would not be where we are right now. Couldn't he do that? I can do that. I'm just a contractor. I know that. I should have said that. But he sees things just the way you do. He comes honestly, says that I, I thought if I say that, I create panic. That's, that's what he honestly says that. Well, I know it is honest, but he's honestly a stupid man for saying that. Why would you think all these Americans that like you, they have two eyes and two ears or not, are less than you? Why wouldn't you tell them? He would have saved his presidency. So, see, he was not able to support himself, to protect himself to help himself, how can he help you? But yet you think a guy like him is your leader just because of his appearance. Okay, this is the problem, brother. So we're going back. You do not have an ideology. What is the right things to do? What should we do? Yes, you are a big force. But I have no leader, you have no ideology, you're out of control, and you don't know your enemy. You're know, like a blind man, drunk man, going right in the field where bullet comes from all the way around. But anyways, if you felt a guy from Iran which, by the way, I did run from it <laughs> because I'm not a Muslim. They would want to kill me. Might have some ideas about this. Why is that? Because, because I've always been thinking about you guys. You can erase the image of John Wayne from my head. I've seen his movies, Robert Mitchum. You can't. James Stewart. I've seen their, those movies from childhood. Yeah, and those figures are in my head, you know. They were kind of my heroes, you know. So respectful. So, I'm asking you for now, please, for the sake of your race, for the sake of your reputations, 
I'm telling you to the hardest one of you. Control your anger. Do not play in the hand of these people. Don't. Try to think. Go on the YouTube. Send me an email. I, if you want, I will come to help you. I cannot see the white race going down drain like this. I can't see it. I am the guardian of the Anglo-Saxons. This race has to, has to save the world. And I'm telling you, it is not those who are in power. They're fulfilled. We know who they are. But you are not fulfilled. You're suffering from achievement deficit disorder because you haven't achieved what you want to. That is way bigger even than America. It's really saving the planet because this country has to be saved. It's the work of a couple hundred years of the brightest people on the earth. Even Prophet of Islam says the day of resurrection will happen when the sun comes from the west. And Baha'u'llah, the glory of God, our Prophet, our manifestation of God, he says it has. This is the science, he says. This is the art. It is people like Abraham Lincoln. It is the proclamations of independence. Those are the sun that is coming from the West. It is supposed to come from the West. I totally believe of those 24 elders in the Bible, one is George Washington and one is Abraham Lincoln. They are the ones, I know that. But would you get the message though? My message was very simple, isn't it? I told you what your problems are. I told you what you don't know. Control and anger is a problem. Lack of ideology is a problem. Not knowing your, who your enemy is a problem. Those are the problems. But the solution, I gave you one of them. If you are truly wanting the white people come into the power, because by majority they will, they are the majority of the number, but you have created a drift between you and the rest of the white people. You didn't, but their leader, your leaders do that. The wrong leaders. First they tell you you're superior and all these minorities your enemy. They are effing wrong. These guys, they love you. Go to their countries. You, with your cowboy hat. You see in Egypt, in Jordan. Go in Lebanon. Go in Morocco. All come around you, they respect you. They love you. You're not hated by them. They're making it like this, because they want to make money. Divide them and cultivate the money. I don't know if you can take, take heat with this, but for now, if you believe in me, do not, for God's sake, and there are no circumstances, do not go on the inauguration day out, completely ignore it. Don't say a word. Then let's just start a new ideology where you as a white minority ostracized to the fullest come back and see who are the others in the same shoes you are. Which are the blacks, Latinos, Asians? Be with them. Immediately, the rest of the white people, they say, wow, God, this is it. They join you. And then you're the majority. 
you will rule the way you should. We don't know if white people are ruling, the non-white people, if they are ruling America. We don't know what kind of America would that be. It is totally unacceptable and democratic if you think the whole government and all the president have to be white. It just doesn't work that way. Not that they're bad and incapable. No, no, no. Their number is not there. So, how do we unite with the rest of Americans of your own kind? I give you a hint, okay? Yeah. Your friends are not those who are with you. You know, you're the deleted items on the computer of the government. They put you all in recycle bin. And if they give you power, all of you fight with each other anyways, because you're all kind of opinions, ideas, I see. What a pity. What a shame. And those who know, they don't want to help you. This is stuff I told you is not a big thing. Most people, they know. But you're thinking Joe Biden can come talk like me? He can't. The blacks are leashing him, pulling him. You're the boss, but you have to listen to us. Why? Because you don't have voters. You're the voters, but you're not voting for him. That's a problem. So he has to go find it somewhere else. God bless you.